In today's development update video, I'd like to show you how you can assign a keyboard shortcut for the reverse command inside of an operation. To assign any keyboard shortcut inside of SolidWorks, you'll simply right click in blank space on the command manager. From the right click menu, we can select customize and from the customize window, we can move to the keyboard tab. Within the keyboard tab, we're going to search for the reverse command. When I've found it, I can assign the letter R for reverse. If you assign a keyboard shortcut you don't like, use backspace to remove it. I make that point because if you use delete, SolidWorks will actually allow you to reassign the delete key to do something other than delete geometry. This is good to know and also quite the handy little office prank. So with our keyboard shortcut set, let's select OK and jump into using it. We're going to demonstrate it using the new 2D chamfer option. So from the 2D operations drop down, I'll select 2D chamfer. From my library, I'll pick a tool and then we can jump to the geometry tab. Now before we get into using the reverse key, I'd like to explain how the chaining logic works. The side of an edge you pick is going to determine the direction the chain goes in. If I were to divide this edge in half and pick on the left hand side of the edge, we're chaining around the outside of the geometry. And if I were to select on the right hand side of the edge, we're chaining around the inside of the geometry. Why is that? Because based on where I select on the edge, the chaining is going to begin moving away from that point, climb milling. Now, if I select and I'm going the wrong direction, we could have used the reverse button. However, with our new keyboard shortcut, I'll simply tap R on my keyboard. Let's go ahead and add the same chain for the other slot and make sure we're on the inside of the geometry. Now the other place it's helpful to understand how you're chaining geometry is at the end of a chain. Let me demonstrate why. I'm going to select this edge to chamfer it and that's tangentially looped all the way around the edge. But I'd like to stop at this arc. In this case, I want to choose near the end of that chain. If I were to reverse that last selection, you'll see that the chain continued. But by reselecting the geometry at the end of that edge, I've terminated my selection at that piece of geometry. So let's try it again on the other side. I'll select the arc. It chains all the way around. If I select at the beginning of this edge, it does nothing. If I were to select at the end of the edge, it terminates the chain at that edge. And I can reproduce that same series of clicks by tapping the R on my keyboard to reverse that last selection. We'll add one more chain to the front here. So we'll start at this arc and we'll end at this arc. Again, if I tapped R, I would reverse that last selection and end up with a completely different result. Let's go ahead and select OK. And we've produced a chamfering toolpath uh, that incidentally automatically trims the ends of the chain to avoid a collision with the edges of the model. Now the other instance where you're going to use the reverse functionality is when you're using a flow toolpath to machine something like an outside fillet. So again I'll select a tool and from the geometry tab I'm going to start selecting the faces that I want to flow along. The arrow indicates the direction the tool is going to flow along the surface. In this case, we're running perpendicular to the surface and we want to run along the surface so I can use my R key to reverse or we could call it realign the flow tool path along the surface. So I'll continue selecting surfaces. Anytime the selection's wrong, I can use my R key to realign that selection. Again, I'll select OK, and that produces a nice flow toolpath to surface machine that outside fillet. 
Well, I hope this showed you both how to assign the R key and a few places where that could be useful to you.